Good morning. Happy Wednesday. Hi, Rosemary. How are you? <clears throat> Good morning, Dee. Hi, Anita. Hi, Judy. Welcome, everybody. Hi, Sandy. <clears throat> I was up super early this morning. I already did my five mile walk before the sun came up, which makes me feel very productive. <laughs> but um, I was kind of scrambling getting ready to do this this morning. And it's ex an exciting day because my um, online floral oil painting course is opening for enrollment today at 11. So if anybody wants to um, take the course and you're not on my email list, let me know. It'll be open for enrollment from Today at 11 until next Tuesday. Yeah, Rosemary, I try to walk five miles almost every day. And really, really fast, which is good. I can't, I used to run and I can't run. My body doesn't like it anymore. So I just do really fast walks, which I know is much healthier. Healthier, it just takes longer. But it was beautiful this morning. A little chilly for me, though. So how is everybody this morning? Okay, so... I was just scrambling to figure out what I was gonna paint. I usually decide in the morning just kind of what I feel like. And yesterday I went to, um, good morning Margie, to Roots Market, which is this little market that's like 10 minutes from my house to um, get Greek food from a wonderful um, place that's here in my town. And I took some photos, so let me show you. I think I might paint this today. I got a lot of good suggestions. Um, aren't they beautiful? I think I'm going to paint red peppers. I thought I should paint flowers in honor of my floral course opening today, but somehow I feel like painting red peppers, and sometimes you just got to do what you feel like instead of what you think you should do. Okay, how's that? Is that good? Good morning, Emily. <clears throat> MX Smith is my daughter. Good morning, Sarah. Are you waiting in the airport? And Sarah is my friend that I usually walk with. Sarah already did the walk this morning. Um, and she's on her way to vacation right now. So she's probably sitting in Harrisburg Airport. Yeah, they're pretty, aren't they, Anita? I just snapped it real quick when I was buying my veggies. I'm sure that the Amish stand holders at Market or at um, Roots must think I'm completely insane as... I'm buying things and I'm totally distracted by taking pictures of all the fruits and vegetables. I mean, it's completely justified. Good morning, Susie. <laughs> Evan's talking to Sarah. Sarah's on her way to Florida. How fun is that? All right, so I'm going to block in here. Yeah, I feel like I've been absolutely um, knee-deep in planning for this course for so long. Like, I don't think, I mean, it's going to sound a little crazy, but I haven't had a thing where I've worked on something so diligently for so long that at one moment, it'll either be successful or not, since I think I had a baby. Like, nothing in my life ever seems to change that dramatically, <laughs> but I feel like creating this course is sort of like giving birth to a baby. It's like so much planning and thinking and all of a sudden the moment comes that it's okay, it's here, today's the day, it's time for it to happen, we'll see what how it goes. It's exciting and scary and way out of my comfort zone, but those are all good things to do. I think that's what more than anything art has taught me. Well, and having my business has too, like get out of my comfort zone. You guys can't hear the the uh, music, can you? Hi, Kathy. Or my husband teaching school. You can't hear that, can you? As I do have, I have my um, earphones in. I need to get some um because I'm going to do Facebook group with my course I need to get like earbuds or something oh good wonderful thanks for letting me know 
Yeah, I need to get earbuds or something so that um, um, you know what I'm saying. So that I sound better. Hmm. Look at that dark. I got a darker sap green. Thank you. I hope so. <clears throat> I certainly learned a lot. Pushed myself out of my comfort zone like crazy and learned so much. I feel like every time I turn around, I'm learning something new. Like right now, I'm having a little trouble with my Zapier. Zapier is an a, like an app that connects like your email to your website um, and even to social media. So if you post something somewhere and gather email addresses, like your Zapier hooks it all together and I'm having Zapier issues. So now I've got to go into the Zapier and, and figure that out. It's like, ugh. One more thing to think about. The battle. Oh, yes. Half the battle is starting. You're right. Although that's never. Starting isn't really ever my issue. My issue is <laughs> probably starting too much. Like I'm always ready to dive into something. And, and doing this course, there was a point where I thought, you know, maybe it's too much. Maybe I should wait and launch it in the winter instead of doing it now when there's so much going on. And I'm in a really good mastermind group right now that I'm really enjoying. And they were all like, yeah, just do it. You can get it done. No problem. I think I probably might easily have talked myself out of it and thought, oh, I'll give myself the winner to pull it all together. But, you know, then when you do that, then you kind of end up not being as productive because you know you have the extra time so other things take precedence and you put things on hold so it is good to just sometimes push yourself and and make it happen hmm. I like how simple that is it's kind of Merameco-ish isn't it yeah it, that dark was a sap green I, and actually, my thing wasn't even... So I got this... I was watching Amy Crew. Amy Crew artist. I think that's her handle on Instagram. And she was talking about this. It's Michael Harding's permanent sap green. It's a really dark sap green. <clears throat> so I got it to try it. And I like it. It's, um, it's a nice dark, dark green that... Some, I'm still sometimes a little challenged with greens. And I like to have one that's... Um, uh, I forgot to put my permanent rose out here. I'm going to have to get that out. That's uh, darker. Because regular sap green that I have, the one that's Windsor Newton, it's more of a, a softer color. Um, it doesn't go real far. Like you run out of it quickly. And this sap green's got a little more oomph. And I like that. I mean, there's a place for both, really. I'm just looking for where some of my darker reds are. Thank you, modern portraits. I always want to love port learn portrait painting too. Have any of you guys ever done that? I always think that that looks like so fun to learn traditional portraiture painting. Maybe someday I'll take a course in that. I'm kind of itching for a course. I would like to learn something new. I always like learning. Um, so once I get my own course done, then I'll be ready to take somebody else's. But like, I do love my course. I am excited about it because it's honestly, I would take my course. Because um, it's beautiful and it's um, it's really nice. I just... I just was very lucky. Just followed portraits are hard. I know, I know. Scare me. They do. Even like when I was in college and we had to do self-portraits, I was always a little intimidated by that. I think I still have one of the ones that I did of myself. Sorry. I usually spend 18 plus hours on one. Yeah, I bet. 
or months. I would think months because in portraits, I think, don't you build up transparent layers a lot of times? That's the part of it I think that really intrigues me is that gentle, um, it's kind of like watercolors where you bring up something very gently and methodically and watch it kind of become more and more, have the depth and the luminosity. I love that. Yeah. I'm just cleaning off my palette here. I'm not telling you what I'm up to. A little more distracted today than usual. Okay, so now I'm ready to do my pigment, pigment sticks. I need a little sip of coffee. What's everybody having today, coffee or tea? I think this is my Yeti that I love and it's starting to get lots of paint on it. I think someday it'll be full of paint and that'll be fun. Mary, you do have a full day? That's good. I like full days. Shadows and highlights, yeah. That's the key to anything really popping. All right, gray. Um, all right, let me get my pigment sticks out. I'll pull them up here. Do you ever see my bin of pigment sticks? I never, ever have enough pigment sticks. But what's your very dark color in between? It's, um, it's a little bit of magenta and sap green. Good morning, Donna. So there are my pigment sticks. They're just so fun looking, aren't they? That's just a box of happiness. <clears throat> All right, put you back up here. Shell's having coffee. That's what I'm having too. Can't believe I've been up since five and I'm only now drinking my coffee, although it's a nice treat to have it right now. Usually I'm kind of finished with my coffee by the time I do my painting with you guys. <clears throat> I did get a new one of these. I'm finishing that up. I love when they're little nubs like that though. I love like little, I love my little pencil. It's a little eraser, although my eraser is getting hard and dry and has paint on it. But I love, like I should paint that. I would love to paint this little pencil. Maybe we'll do that next week. <clears throat> okay, what else do I want to do in here? Some red. This red, this is um, a lizard and orange. I should really like record what my paints are because then I sometimes I can't replace them because I don't know what they were. And that's got a little gunky thing hanging there. I gotta clean that off. What do you need? Oh, are you okay? Yeah. Okay, because I have a couple Zoom links open. Oh, like a parent meeting, so. Yeah, no, it's working. Okay. We're not. Ha everyone can see me okay, right? My husband's doing some Zoom meetings. With parents and he wanted to make sure the internet was okay um can you paint over oil paint sticks yes so this is kind of like just extra wet paint going on there and i will paint right over that <clears throat> and try to let a little bit of it show through um Nida's palette says i'm a watercolor artist who started with acrylics and also did oils sometimes and i love watercolors but i feel like revisiting oils any tips well I've been on that journey only a little bit opposite. I was always a watercolor artist. Like when I was in college, I painted mostly watercolors, but you know, I also did gouache, which is opaque watercolors, you know, things like that. Cause I always had to do marker comps, things like that. Whereas, yes, that would be fun. I think I should photograph that. I also have garlic that I need to photograph. So I should do that. Um, All right, I'm sorry, I was distracted. Um, what was I talking about? Oh, I did watercolors. And then I didn't do a lot because, you know, I had my kids and I had my business, so I kind of didn't do a lot of art as much as I would have liked. And then when I dove back in, I wanted to loosen up my style and not paint as tight. So I 
started painting um, with oils. I would go to these things with my business partner in Philadelphia, and we would go to these, like, houses. I don't know. This guy just had this course that we signed up. It was, like, Friday afternoons once a month, and we would go to the beautiful estates and paint plein air. And, like, he wouldn't even teach us anything. He would just... He just, like, was the guy who knew everybody. I don't know. It was the strangest thing. But I went there and did that. And I had no idea how to paint with oils. Not even the vaguest clue. I didn't have one of those plein air easels. I still don't. I definitely want one of those. I need to buy myself one of those. But um, anyway, I just sat in the ground. I think I have a picture of myself doing it one time in my little overalls. I was sitting on the ground painting with oils and I made an enormous mess. I kind of stippled colors. I know it was beautiful greens and blues. You might have heard this story before because I know I told this story before. Anyway, I was painting and I made an enormous mess and it was this beautiful thing filled with oil paint. Like talk about wasting paint. And I put it in my car. We had just gotten a brand new Volkswagen Jetta. We still have it all these years later. And I drove home from Philly. And there, I, little known to me, my son had left his basketball in the trunk. And the basketball rolled around the entire trunk. And so the bottom of that trunk is still purple, has purple and green oil paint. It's really pretty, but what a mess. But I'm known for doing crazy things like that. And then, anyway, so that's how I started oil painting. I had no idea what I was doing, and I would just buy paints and just experiment. And then little by little, I learned more and more until I, um, hi, Laura. And then I started getting up and painting every morning, and, and so here I am, still doing that. <laughs> and I love it. Oops, my orange is a little dry there. I love this color. I need to get more of this. It's a very nice red. It's called um, Vermilion Extra. And this is an old Holland paint. But I looked this up. I think this paint's like 30 some dollars for this little tube. And so I, I, need, I need a new one. I just didn't treat myself to it yet. But And it's dryish too. I have to use a little bit of my... This is um, Liquin that I use, like if my paint's dry. Okay, I'm gonna put a little bit more of that out. I need to clean my palette off this weekend. I have a lot of commissions that I need to work on too. It takes oil paint so long to dry. That's the trickiest part. So anyway, did I finish saying what I was saying? So I started out in watercolor and gouache. Love that. Wanted to loosen my style because I painted super realistically. <clears throat> I don't know if that's as deep of a red. See how orange that is? And that's so much deeper red. So I might have to get out. I don't usually like to use um, cadmium. I always hear they're unhealthy. But I might have. Let me well, look at this. I wonder what this is like. I have a lot of. Oh, there. This. Oh, that was Vermilion Extra. Well loved, too. I'm going to see. I'm going to dig in my thing over here. I think I have a nice deep. Reds are tricky. Like sometimes you really have to find. The perylene red is probably a good one to use. I thought I had a sorry red. An acridone. No, it's, um, let me see. I need this anyway. My permanent rose is a little lacking over here. Uh oh, let's get it open. There we go. <clears throat> I'm going to put out this perlene red. I think this will be a nice dark red. Oh, thank you. Oh, yeah, that's darker. That's what I needed. More of a true red color. Yeah, this is red and um, Indian yellow is in there also. Now, 
to lighten it. Um, shoot, I'm not very organized here, am I? I'm gonna try this. Oh, this fun ruby violet. I love playing with different colors. There's one in your palette. Will that not work? Oh, for what? The reds? Um, no, not for that true red color. It needs to be... Um, for the longest time, I had trouble figuring out a, that crazy red, like a true red. Put a little bit of this in here and see what... I might lighten it too much. Okay, I think that's fine. I need to just let that sit and go with uh, this. Take half of it, and then I'm going to put a little bit of my um, magenta in there. So I need that dark, dark. Clean off my, my knife. That's nice. And actually, I'm going to put more of that. And now I'm looking at my reference and I feel like, see how that kind of looks kind of pink? Those highlights look pink. Some of them look whitish, some pink. So I need to mix up a nice, vibrant, light pink. And that I'll use my permanent rose. And how can I have my hands this dirty already this morning? Yikes. <clears throat> All right, so that's nice. I'll lighten that a little bit of this. <clears throat> yeah, it's been crazy. My husband teaches at school some of the days of the week, but like today, he'll be working from the dining room, which is where my business is. Like I have a design business, advertising and marketing. So he be working from the other side of the table it gets a little crazy oh isn't that a beautiful color I see that that's really pretty <laughs> yes I do too that's why I try not to use cadmiums because I don't want to wear gloves not very good at um, being tidy either just put a little bit of that that's nice for highlights time is at 8 23 I feel like I'm going a little slow today <clears throat> so I have reds pinks orange I need a dark green um, and then I want to neutralize that a little bit so I'm going to add a little bit of, of uh, magenta in there to make it a little less saturated in color a little more. Graphite. Oh, that's fun talking of graphite. So I was at helping m my husband's cousin clean out um, some of her house. It was, um, it was a big project this weekend, but I got this from her. There wasn't very many things in her house that I wanted, but I love this. How cool. She lived in New York. So this is a box of graphite isn't that cool I love that like what a fun find it's down in there there's a little charcoal other charcoals so I've seen sometimes how people um use the charcoal and do like a base drawing and then spray it with hairspray so I thought maybe I'm gonna try that that sounds like fun doesn't it all right I need a bright brighter green I know creating art is so much fun Yellow in there. I would be happy um, mixing colors all day long. The greens are pretty muted in here. Is the this um, this is a piece of granite. I got it because when I was filming my course, I was afraid that a glass palette, which is what I used to use, I was afraid it would reflect too much. 
Um, Linda, I do varnish. I usually do these small paintings. I varnish with a Blair um, varnish, a spray varnish. Michael Jackson, that's fun. Okay, so I think that's a good start. So I'm going to put this up here. Yes, it's marble. This one is actually, I think I got this from Amazon. It's um, a cutting board, I think. I have another one that I got at a marble place that I was using before. I don't know if you remember it, but it um, had it has like a black line through it. I mean, it's beautiful, but it's distracting when I'm filming. Getting the pinks right. Well, the pinks are, how soon do I varnish? I probably wait to varnish at least, I try to wait a month before I varnish. It's a long wait, especially when you have to ship things out for the holidays. That's what I have to get a lot of my holiday commissions finished soon. Because <clears throat> it really should be good and dry, especially if you're shipping it somewhere. Oops, sorry. This is... Let me see if I can tighten this. I feel like this thing's wiggling on me. Oh, there we go. That's much better. A little bit of pain over here. All right, I need to sit with my coffee. <laughs> now I'm going to try and let some of those fun colors show through in there. Maybe I'll work on those right now. <clears throat> Oops, Isabel just left for school. I'm so busy here in the morning, although I still do like working from home. It is nice. Um, yeah, I really love how juicy that um, color is in there from the... The, uh, the pigment sticks. I don't like this a little brighter right here. I'm going to add a little bit more yellow in. <clears throat> um, all right, let me map in some bigger areas. Sorry, I'm thinking here. The reflections on these peppers are so beautiful. I always worry, like it wasn't good sunlight. I always wish the stands at the market were in the sun and they're, you know, undercover, which is smart for them, but not for photos. But really, I love the highlights that happened in this photo, even with it being in the shade. I used to always go to the market here in Lancaster Central Market, and since COVID began, I really have only been there, I think, one time. Fun part of market is the hustle and bustle and busyness of everything, and the one time I went, it was kind of toward the beginning, and it, everything was kind of closed and dark, and it actually kind of made me sad, and I don't even think the flower stand was open, which, how can that be? We need flowers more now than ever. I did buy some yesterday. I bought some um, pictures of them. I Those are so fun. Look at those little, they're like little stars in there. Aren't they pretty? I thought about doing that today. And I also bought some um, 
Oh, shoot. What are they called? Dahlias? Rosemary, you're going to the farmer's? Isn't that pretty? And I took photos of pumpkins. That was all just my little fun yesterday morning before the day started. Oh, yes. Yep. Lancaster Central Market is under. Yep. Yes, it's a, that. If you ever go there, that's such an amazing market. I used to work there when I was young. My first job was at, at market. I worked at a um, meat and cheese stand there for many years. I liked working at market. Nice people. Would be a nice thing to do as a job, I think, like have a market stand. A lot of people around here do that, but the bad side is that you never have weekends off. Like when I was a kid and worked, I always knew like every Friday and Saturday night friends would be going out and I'd have to get up at four o'clock in the morning. So going out wasn't as fun. <clears throat> yeah, they do look purple and light blue. Yep. I agree. <clears throat> the interactive part to my course will be, I'm going to do Facebook Lives once a week. And I'm, so that people can ask questions and, and you can get more feedback on things that, um, that you're unsure of. And we'll see how that goes. I think that'll be fun. Yeah, it's so much to think about. But I'm excited that I got it as far as I did. I had a good team. It's nowhere near over, but. <clears throat> How are you, Judy? I know we have to get together. I worked on Judy's website. You have to go check it out. It's beautiful. I love her artwork. <clears throat> Fun thing about when I work on websites for other artists, I love it because I spend time looking at art all the time. There's nothing more fun than that. Judy, do you have a link? You ought to put um, your website, put it in the comments here so people can go check out your site. A little green in there. I'm going to pull that in because that kind of keeps it cohesive. It's only 8 30. I'm still good on time. I feel like there's sometimes those pigment sticks will leave like a little clump and then it gets caught and then it pulls the paint away instead of. I think I got it. So yeah, I think that interactive part of it will be fun. I'm looking forward to that the most, I think. I love the community part, like you guys all coming here and showing up and hanging out with me while I do this. <clears throat> all right, um... Oops, I picked up more of that dark than I wanted to. I think I'm going to wipe that a little bit right there. Nice thing is you can always clean something off if you're not happy with it. I don't want that so dark, so I'm going to clean that. Um...
Okay. Does anybody have any questions? I'm knee deep in thought here. I can't. Not doing very well at multitasking this morning, am I? I'm listening to my husband upstairs talking. Very loud. Such a big change teaching from home. <clears throat> um, let me see. I need this to be a little more orange in here. A little more red. <clears throat> so that's a little harder edged and that got mushy looking there so I'm going to clean that too a little bit I'll just wipe that off and take it back so that I because I had too much of the dark background mixing into what's more, one of the harder edges that you see better. Now that looks so flat, doesn't it? Okay, let me think about what I need to add a little like this. I'm doing what I always say not to do is <laughs> reworking into my paints like that. And I don't want to do that. So I need to be more intentional, take my time and make intentional brush strokes. And I gotta practice what I preach, right? It's all those crazy things that you say inside your head all the time. I do it too. Like even when I'm walk going for my walk, I'm like, stand up straight. Um, think about how you're holding your shoulders so that you don't get stiff. All right, that's better. Oh, I'm missing. Love the details. Kim creates my mind. It's so beautiful. Judy Brock Fine Art. Yes, go check out her website. It's beautiful. The very dark reds look great. Um, thank you for sharing your time. What? Cleaning your brush. Oh, just with paper towel. That's what I'm doing as I'm reading this. I'm just cleaning my brush like that. Another cleaning that thing that I like to use, and I use it like to clean my palette and brushes if I need to, is this lavender brush cleaner. And then the brush cleaner that I get are these little cakes, and I think it's kind of the same stuff. I see one back here, but it's not in the box. Let me see if I can grab it, show it to you. Um, it's by the same company, and I keep this at my utility sink, and I just scrub my brush into it and clean it. So this is kind of the same lavender brush cleaner, but it's in cake form. Really like that. And it's supposed to be healthier, you know, than using, it's not chemicals. Do I like zest it? Um, you can use other things other than zest it. I like zest it because I'm lazy. It's just all in there and I don't have to uh, mix anything. So my zested is right here. I just pour it into my little jar and use it. I don't have to have other jars of chemicals, even though I do have a few here, but not many. I try to keep my painting practice as healthy as I can. Yeah. 
and I love rosemary brushes. So whenever I order new brushes, I just get myself some new Zestit. <clears throat> I'm looking for my, my dark areas are before I start putting in the lights because the lights are the fun part. It's hard to hold off sometimes because that's what's going to kind of pull it all together. So I'm squinting at my reference. Um, so this is way too bright right in here. Crazy right there. That up. Okay. <clears throat> the shadows and the highlights. Yep, that's where the magic happens. Definitely. <clears throat> and it really is like my reds are still a little. I don't know what they are. They're just not quite what I want. So my, let's see what this is like. This cadmium red deep that I have. If I can even get it open because I don't know where my oh yeah I did let's see if that's closer it's funny sometimes you know you can mix most colors with the basics but some certain colors I really have trouble trouble creating on my own That's nice. That those Vasari paints just go down so nicely. All right. Close. Close to putting on the highlights, I think. That looks kind of funny, but there is a highlight right in there that I'm going to have to add. Them. I remember all these colors from Bob Ross videos. How fun. I think I'd enjoy watching those now. He did a lot of landscapes, right? <clears throat> I-I don't think I watched that very often when I was in like elementary school. All right, I think I'm just about ready to put the highlights in. Okay. Love how crinkly they look. Okay, should we put some highlights in? Are there any other dark areas? I think I need to push my... Um, these little stubs, what are they called? <laughs> no, I like those. I like that light showing. I struggle with light reds. What do you use to create them? Judy, um, it depends if I wanted to go pink or light. I would use, um, if it can go orange, I would use the, um, Indian yellow. Or I could see what it looks like. Um, let me try this. I might have to mix another lighter red. 
Your reds are tricky. I mix different, um, <clears throat> like I mixed in my pink, I mixed this. I have some of these light, and I have a light pink one in here that I love that might be nice to mix. Because when you add white to it, it gets chalky looking. I have this Gamblin Radiant Magenta is nice too, but it's almost, oh, here. Love this one, Rosebud. I'll mix that into my red and see how it looks. Okay, just to lighten. I'll mix a little bit in here. I'll mix into my red and see what we get. Can you see that okay? Yeah, that gets so, um, well, there's definitely color like that in there. I do like it. I'm going to play with that. Cadmium red light is the lightest red. Oh, that's a, I'm sure I probably have that over here in my crazy bin of stuff. I should look for it. I'm not going to make you guys wait that long until I would dig that out. <clears throat> Yeah, it loses its brightness so much. I think I'm going to put some lights in now and see how it looks. Because I'm feeling a little like I'm over or overworking some of these areas. I'm just using this as like um, a pink. I love pink. Okay. And I'll do some highlights. So they're mostly light blue and, and, um, That's already making it look more dimensional. <clears throat> the hardest part is waiting to add those. So I need some blue ones too. Let me do a little bit of this. I always hold my breath when I'm doing this part of it. Oh, you're welcome. I'm glad you enjoyed it, Sheila. A sharp point, yes, on my brush, me too. Yeah, this huge brush really goes far. Let me see, I need a little, this is kind of, uh, this is gonna be too dominant. Let me soften this color a little bit before I put it in here.
Oh, I like that purple. It's nice, isn't it? Oh, that makes it fun. I love that. Sometimes you have to take risks like that and put a color in somewhere where maybe it doesn't even really exist, but it can make all the difference to making the painting like just a little more magical. <clears throat> Highlights are so fun. <clears throat> Thanks for the heart, Judy. Yeah, it creates, it makes them look like they have the shine. Yeah. It's not waiting and being patient and doing it at the end. It all pulls it together, but it's just patience. Because if you put it in too soon, it kind of gets muddy. It doesn't kind of get muddy. It gets really muddy. Anywhere else that I'm missing anything? I still feel like my um, thing needs to... Not too, um, uh, um, so I do see a little bit of this back here. I didn't notice that before. Let me get, I'm almost finished. Oh, hello. Little, it's got a little clump on there. Do you use medium to help it lay over top? Uh, no. No. No medium. Uh, that's better. Is that better? I think that's better. Now I'm looking through my phone at what you're looking at to see. <clears throat> Thanks, Anita. Yeah, I think I'm happy with it. Do you think anything else needs to be pushed back? Maybe. Because I don't want to overwork it. I think that's good. I think I'm going to sign it. Um, it's fun. The top right pepper looks pointy. This one? All the way in there? Is it too... Do I need to soften that? Or this one? It might be pointy. They had some beautiful hot peppers at market. All right, I think that's good because I'll mess it up. Oh, thanks. Have a great day. Okay, so there's my palette. Oh, look, there's some sunlight coming in. I love that. Made it in the top right corner. Two little highlights. Where in this one, Rosemary? You're welcome. Thanks, Pam. All right, let me turn that around and say goodbye. So, thanks for coming. It was good to see you guys. I hope you have a fabulous day. And if you want to do my course, you can sign up starting at 11 today and send me good vibes. And tell any of your friends who you think might enjoy the course too. That would be wonderful. So thanks. Have a great day. See you next week. Bye.